For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome guitars. This season I'm going to be going more in depth showing you some of the partial builds and behind the scenes stuff that I've never shown before. I'll also be answering some of your questions that I've been receiving in the comments below these videos. Of course I'll be refinishing, refretting, rewiring, whatever it takes to turn these guitars into some real shred machines. This is Trash to Thrash. Hello everybody, welcome back to Trash to Thrash. I'm your host, Mark Murray, and today we're going to be building some pedals. About a year ago, I came up with a design for a pedal I had never seen anyone else make. It's something unique to my style of playing, and I linked up with a fellow YouTuber and Instagrammer who builds pedals to make my dream a reality. It incorporates a kill switch, a boost, and of course, some sick splatter paint. I get asked about kill switches all the time, so real quick, let me explain what a kill switch is. A kill switch is a switch you can install in your guitar that when activated, it mutes your guitar's signal. You can use a push button style kill switch or a toggle style kill switch. Toggle kill switches are great for on stage to just kill your guitar's sound in between songs or whenever you want to turn your guitar off. Push button kill switches are used as an effect to create a rhythm with your guitar that adds a percussive element to guitar playing. You can come up with some different sounding riffs using a kill switch. I've been using them since about the year 2000 and I've always loved them. If you have a Les Paul type guitar that has two volumes, then you already have a kill switch in your guitar and you might not even know it. With a guitar that has two volumes, you could set one volume at zero and one volume to 10, and then use your selector switch to jump between the settings so it'll emulate the kill switch effect. This guitar here actually has a toggle kill switch, a push button kill switch, and an EMG PA2 boost toggle switch. This is Matt Clark. He builds pedals under the name Goliath FX. He and I became friends on Instagram through our passion for metal and for gear. He's a bass player who started building pedals for fun a few years back, and if you look at his page, you'll see he has a real clean wiring style, and he's into some really cool finishes like me. He started his pedal building business from the ground up, and over the last year, he's had a ton of growth building pedals for some pretty big artists. Matt's based out of the UK, and while it would have been a lot cheaper to find someone closer to me, I'm in California here in the US, I like to support people starting a business from the ground up, and I really like the way he's doing things. He's also a dad like me, so if I can help support his business, which in turn supports his family, then I'm all in. Here's Matt putting together a small circuit. He uses resistors, transistors, capacitors, potentiometers, all kinds of electronic components. He puts most of the parts in a blank circuit board, and then solders them in. Then he clips the legs off, adds more parts, and then solders those in too. He also pre-drills the enclosures and assembles them for me. Then he ships them to me, and this is how I get them. Fully assembled and ready to rock, but I'm gonna refinish it. These pedals are fully functional at this point, all the switches and buttons are hooked up, so I'm gonna remove the nuts from the outside and disassemble them, but I'm gonna leave all the electronics intact inside the enclosure. For years I've thought about making pedals, I've even experimented on a boost a few years back. There's some simple circuits you can find online and you can hunt down the parts and start building them yourself. But I wanted to do something a little different than what's been done before. I love using kill switches on my guitars, everyone knows this, and I know not everybody wants to put a kill switch in their guitar, and even I have some guitars that I wouldn't want to put one in. So I wanted to come up with a way to make it easier for people to use a kill switch without having to modify their guitar. There have been times when I wrote a song using a kill switch, but then I'm limited to what guitar I can play if I want to play that song. Another thing I like using on my guitars is a boost switch. For years I used the EMG PA2, which is a toggle switch that activates a 20 decibel clean boost, but at 80 bucks a piece, they're a pretty expensive upgrade to add to each one of your guitars, especially if you have a bunch of guitars like me. So the solution for me is to take those two things that I normally like to have built into a guitar, and put them into a pedal that I could run any guitar through. And that's exactly what we did. I contacted my friend Matt Clark at Goliath FX, and we came up with a plan on how I wanted these pedals to look and act. He nailed it with this prototype, and now the Guitar Guts Kill Boost pedals a reality. I really love the look of this pedal too. It's another Guitar Guts signature, the splatter. Of course, the lettering's all in gold, which I love, 
and it's also powered by a 9 volt battery or can be connected to an AC adapter. I have ideas for more unique pedals with more awesome finishes, so if you dig this one, there's more on the way that do different things that no other pedals out there have done before. If you want to buy one of these pedals, head over to GuitarGuts.com and click the link at the top that says Guitars for Sale. There's also a link down in the description below. Limited quantity is available, but you could always get on the pre-order for the next batch. Now let's take these pedals apart, starting with the rear cover. And I'll inspect everything inside, make sure they look good. And they do. Check these things out. The outside looks nice and clean, no scratches or chips. And the inside looks great too. Matt always does a really good job wiring these things up. This is a pretty simple pedal, so if you've ever wondered what the inside of a pedal looks like, this is what a basic one looks like. Underneath the knob, this is the mechanism that controls the boost amount, called a potentiometer. The board looks nice and clean. And here you can see the wires where you connect the 9 volt battery and the clip inside there. This pedal is already fully functioning, so I'm just going to remove the hardware and push all the components inside the enclosure. I'll put a piece of tape across all the holes in the enclosure so that we don't get paint inside on the electronics. This switch here on the right functions as a kill switch. This is the back of it here. And this red switch here, which goes to the left switch on top, is for the boost. So I'll remove the hardware mounting the two switches, the potentiometer, and the two jacks on top. But then you'll notice there's also a red LED indicator right here that comes on when you turn the boost on. And the 9 volt input jack, which won't be removed, and I'll be taping them off along with the whole back cover. The switch attached to the LED light also didn't want to come out, so I took the nut off at least, and then I taped around the switch, and I'll spray it that way. The LED doesn't want to come out, so we'll cover it up. To cover the small LED light, I actually make these 1 8 inch vinyl cutouts on my Cricut machine. My Cricut's controlled by my computer in my office. We'll hit continue. And we'll hit go over here on the Cricut machine. And now it'll just do its thing for the next five minutes or so. And this is what the machine spits out. A bunch of circles cut, but we'll need to weed the material, which means to remove the negative material that we're not gonna use, so we're just left with the material we are gonna use, the dots. I have another saved file in my Cricut software for my pedal labels. We have a Guitar Guts logo I like to put on there, an in and out label for the jacks, nine volt for the power, and then boost and kill for the two pedal switches. I'll cut a sheet of these and they're arranged so I'm going to get a set of eight labels. You can see the rulers here so I'm going to need about two inches by 11 inches or so to cut the whole pattern. And I'll be cutting it on this metallic gold stock. I get a lot of questions about this vinyl cutting machine and it was about $300 and worth every penny. I love this thing. Back over on the computer we're going to select metallic vinyl and I'm going to use more pressure than default. That's just a preference thing. And then I'll hit go on the Cricut machine. And just like with the dots, the Cricut will do its thing for about 10 minutes or so. And I'm left with this sheet here, and it looks great. This is about the smallest that this machine wants to cut text out at. If you go any smaller than this with the text, the machine won't cut quite as well, and the vinyl ends up stretching and tearing as you're pulling it up. Now we'll head back out to the shop, and I'm going to start sanding down the enclosures. Nothing too crazy here, just taking some 600 grit sandpaper and scuffing up all the surfaces. Now I'll wipe down all the surfaces with some alcohol. And I'll apply the labels over the LED lights. And then we'll head into the paint booth and spray some matte black paint on them. Since they already had a black base, I only did two coats. This is the prototype, the first kill boost and we're gonna put the labels on just like this one shows. Here we have our freshly painted pedal with a set of labels installed. And I actually relocated the guitar guts here and the nine volt up here. One down, three to go. These tiny little vinyl decals are very delicate, so it actually takes a lot longer than you think. It takes about 10 minutes per pedal to put the labels on. And now all four pedals are labeled. 
and we're going to head back out to the spray booth and we're going to shoot some air across the pedals, get any dust that's settled on them off and give them a quick wipe down with the tack cloth. And these things are ready for some matte clear. This is going to add a little bit of protection over the paint and also help to keep the labels sealed down. This stuff dries so fast that I can reapply in about six or seven minutes. If you guys want to help support Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash, share the show. Take a screenshot of the show, throw it up on your Facebook or Instagram story, and tell your friends and family about it. That helps out a ton. One of the best ways to help support is to become a patron. For a dollar a month, you could help support the channel, plus get ad-free versions of the show. For $10 a month, you can get entered into my monthly raffle where I give away custom guitars that I built and other amazing prize packages. Remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to turn on notifications, and like and comment on each episode. Leave a comment on this episode and tell me what your favorite pedal is. Also, go back and watch any older episodes you haven't seen yet and comment on those too. There's a playlist with all the episodes listed down in the description, and there's also links to all the other stuff I'm about to talk about in the description down below. Another way to support is to buy a guitar, a kill switch, or a kill boost pedal. They can be found at my website, guitarguts.com. Right now I have one guitar built, ready to ship, and it's the LTD EX100 Explorer in matte black with gold splatter, EMGs, and a kill switch. That's a mouthful. Of course, you can also send your guitar in to be modded by me and be featured on the show. So if you're interested in that, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com, and tell me about the guitar and send me some pictures of it. I'm flexible on payments. I require a 50% down and then you can make payments while I build it. You can also trade in your old guitars and parts for credit toward your build. And I've even started accepting video game stuff as a form of trading for credit as well. So you can get rid of some stuff you don't want anymore and get your guitar pimped. Subscribe to my retro gaming channel. I love 90s retro gaming stuff like Sonic, Mario, Nintendo, Sega, Power Rangers, Pokemon, Ninja Turtles, Resident Evil, Zelda, if you want to see me buy, sell, and collect that kind of stuff, go subscribe to my second YouTube channel and my gaming Instagram page. Both are listed in the description below, and there's also some bonus guitar footage on there, like last week when I was selling video game stuff to buy more guitars. And last but not least, use the Amazon links listed down at the bottom of the video description. I put links to all the tools and the supplies I use, and when you guys use those links, Amazon credits me for bringing you to them. It costs you nothing extra, Amazon takes the hit and they slide me a little piece as a referral. It's not a lot, but it definitely adds up and it helps out. Once you click one of those links, you'll land on Amazon's website and anything else you order from them, once you go through my link, they're going to give me a credit on anything you buy. So if you use Amazon regularly, click those links as your portal to Amazon and buy whatever else you might need. All right, so now these pedals have been disassembled, sanded and prepped, sprayed black, Labels have been applied, then we put clear over that. Now it's time to throw some blood red splatter on them. When I do splatter, this is how I typically do it. I spray the paint directly into the cap of the paint, enough that you can see it puddling up at the bottom a little bit. And then I literally just fling it all over the guitar or the pedal or whatever I'm painting. Then I come back at the end with a small brush and dip it in the paint and flick some small particles onto the pedals too. Then I'm going to let these things sit for a couple days and dry. Now the time has come for some reassembly. Nothing fancy or too exciting here really. Then it's on to testing, packaging, and shipping one of them out immediately because I actually have an order for one right now. But like I said, now comes the fun part, testing them. Let me show you what these things can do. <laughs> Now let's test out the boost. Here I've got it cranked all the way up to 10. And it's a lot. Yeah. 
Now, you wouldn't want to play like this all the time. You could hear a big difference when I was playing the exact same riff back to back with the boost on and then off. With that type of riff, it sounded better with it off. Now let's do the sustain ring out test. With the boost, the signal's still going strong, but when you turn it off, you could hear it's a much weaker signal. This boost is really designed to be used when you need a lot of extra sustain or for certain types of leads, especially if you're using a noise suppressor, or to create some chaos when you're live on stage. It's a super fun pedal to play around with, and in my opinion, super useful, especially on stage. All right, guys, after splattering the pedals and even getting to wear some of the red splatter now myself, it's time to give away a guitar. So this giveaway is going to be for the Stealth Frankenstrat, black on black. It's a 1992 made in Korea Fender Stratocaster that I rebuilt into the second version of the Stealth Frankenstrat. So as I'm looking through these names, I just downloaded the list off my CEO tier of my Patreon, and I got them loaded into Excel here. And it's pretty cool when I scroll up and down this because I know a lot of you guys on here, and I'm excited when I see different people's names on here. I know this is going to go to one of you. There are only 84 people on here, and a lot of people are people who have already bought guitars from me, have uh, sent their guitars in to be rebuilt, and people who have won. So every month when I do this, I always wonder, is it going to be somebody I've done work for or somebody per that I personally know or what? So what I do is I go on to Patreon, I download my complete list of patrons of the CEO tier, and then I load it into an Excel spreadsheet which numbers everybody from one to whatever the no top number is. In this case, number 84. And now I've pulled up the random number generator from Google. We got a minimum number of one, a maximum number of 84, and it's time to hit that button. Let's see who's the winner. We got number 22. So we scroll up to the 22, and Andrew Holtz. Andrew Holtz, man, congratulations. You've won the second Stealth Frankenstrat. Andrew, I'm gonna contact you right now. I'm going to send you an email. The scammers have been out strong with the last couple giveaways, so I'm going to se start sending out a video to people to let you know so you can see it's my face telling you that you won with your name because it is getting out of hand on YouTube, and I need you guys to know the announcement of the winner will only come in a few forms. It's going to come from this show. It's going to come from my official Patreon account, my official email address, mark at guitarguts.com, or my official Instagram, at guitarguts. I would never create a new account to tell people they've won a contest. Unfortunately, people are falling for it. A couple people contacted me and said that they gave their information up to these scammer guys, so don't believe anybody unless it's coming from one of my official accounts because it's a one-man show. I don't have a team of people doing this stuff. Ryan's my assistant. He does a couple things for me, but that's it. It's all me, so I edit the show, I record it all, I do everything posting and social media wise with it, so congratulations to Andrew, man. I'll contact you. Next month is going to be a tool giveaway. I don't want to say the brand of tools yet, but it's the good ones. It's the good guitar tools, so we're figuring out exactly all the details of it right now, but next week on the show I should have an announcement for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a comment down below and let me know. Shout out to Matt at Goliath Effects. His information's linked below. And remember, if you want to help out Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash, you could share the show with your friends and family. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell to turn on notifications, like and comment each episode. That helps out a ton. Of course, go buy a guitar, a kill switch, a kill boost pedal. All that stuff can be found at guitarguts.com. And you can always send your guitar in to be modified by me and be featured on the show. I even accept payment plans I require a 50% down, and then you can make the rest of the payments while I'm building the guitar. You can also trade in your old guitars, guitar parts, video game stuff, all for credit towards your build. Remember to subscribe to my retro gaming channel, and become a patron. For $10 a month, you can be entered into my monthly raffle where I give away custom guitars that I built and other amazing prize packages. And last but not least, use the Amazon links down in the description below to help me get that Amazon Associates commission. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Rock on, my friends.